It's Badminton World, the show that brings you all things badminton from the four corners of the globe. In the next 30 minutes, we focus on the various methods of coaching. And of course, the latest world rankings and results only on Badminton World. Agility, these three aspects are virtually a must in disciplines that require physical presence, badminton included. If Korea is more focused on respect and discipline, Denmark is more professional in thinking while encouraging freedom of expression. The South Asians seem to adopt a laid-back approach with a certain degree of success. We take a look at the coaching methods of various countries beginning with Malaysia. The proud symbol of Malaysian badminton is Lee Chong Wei. The two-time Olympic Games silver medalist is a product of a system that combined local expertise with that of foreign coaches including Indra Gunawan, Morton Frost Hansen, Park Ju Bong, Lee Mao, Hendrawan and Rexy Manaiki in recent times. Earlier there was Fang Kai Xiang, Han Jiang, Yang Yang and Chen Chiang Ji, architects of the Thomas Cup victory in 1992. Much of Malaysia's coaching style has evolved since the moment the BA of Malaysia decided to open its doors to foreign coaches shortly after Razif Jalani Siddiq played the bridesmaid role at the World Championships in 1987 with the appointment of Fang who quickly declared Malaysia's training methods constituted only 20% of what the Chinese went through. One of the biggest beneficiaries of Fang's regimented coaching method was Rashid Siddiq who is now charting the fortunes of Malaysia's single shuttlers. We have our own opinions, and they have theirs. Like the Europeans, for example, they have their own style. As for Malaysia, we focus more on skills and power. For singles coach Taesu Bok, who took charge of Lee Chong Wei in early 2012, there has been considerable changes in developing the physical side of things. In the final analysis, it's all about creating the right balance. For me, especially in Malaysia, our coaching method focuses on the overall. Maybe in China, they focus more on skills. In Indonesia, they focus on their physical strength. But for Malaysia, it's different. We will focus on both. We will try to balance it out. This is Malaysia's traditional training method. So, we emphasize on skills and physical strength. Malaysia's elite shuttlers enjoy the best of both worlds with the technical staff working closely with a support group such as experts and physical conditioning. But for the last few years, there have been changes. Why? When it's physical strength, we will leave it to the experts like the ISN, MSN, they will handle it. Before, the coaches have to take care of all, but now it's slightly different. But we will still try to balance it out. But for any coach tasked to nurture talent, the basic requirement is skill. There are a lot of aspects. Firstly, the player must have good skills. When you have good skills, we will absorb it to his physical strength, his power of play. Lastly, we will include stamina so that he will be able to remain longer on court. Talent allied with hard work will determine how far a shuttler can make inroads into global supremacy. In this instance, every country shares the same philosophy. I see that between Malaysia and Indonesia, there is not a lot of difference. What we do is almost the same. 
physical. Of course, we want the best from the physical and strategic aspect as well as the technique. But the most important thing is to check the player's talent. Tapi memang kita tengok dulu itu player punya talent. The coach too has the heavy responsibility of turning raw talent into winners. Having worked with the likes of Fang, Yang Yang, Chen Changji and Miss Pun Siri as a player, Rashid believes the coach-player relationship is crucial. Where possible, from my experience as a player and as a champion, I will pass it down to the current and upcoming players and also the generations to come so that they can gain some knowledge and develop their careers even more. For all the physical prowess and exquisite skills, a player must also possess the single-mindedness and psychological strength. When I was a player, I did learn about psychology. And as a coach now, I encourage my players to learn from that aspect as well, so that they can learn to gain confidence when they are on the court facing their opponents. If he is physically strong, automatically his mental strength would improve. Most players, when they are tired, they will think, I cannot go on anymore. I'm tired. I can't afford to continue. So basic mental strength is very important. How to accomplish that? When he has physical strength, he can achieve that. Training is designed in such a way to get the best out of the shuttler. Macam kita boleh design training, jadi dia boleh tahan at least on court. During training, we can design training methods to suit each player. We can gauge during a game how long a player can last. Sometimes we set a target for 100%, but the player can only focus enough to reach 90%. That is actually good enough. Badminton. No sport comes close. The first European to bag the Olympic gold medal has been granted the opportunity to bring the sport of badminton to greater heights. 47-year-old Paul Eric Hoyer, who won the men's singles at the Atlanta Olympics in 1996, succeeds Korea's Kang Yong jung as the president of the BWF, following the governing body's election in Kuala Lumpur on May 18. Hoyer is the 19th president of the world body and the third Dane to be elected into badminton's top position. Of course, you are happy, you are also relieved. It's been a long battle and uh, having the result now is uh, giving me, of course, uh, a great pleasure. But also, bear in mind that uh, I also feel a bit kind of sorry because it's a battle between two people and I cherish uh, Justian very much. So uh, the respect for, for that situation as well, you also have to have. While giving due credit to the foundation laid down by his predecessors, Hoyer promises to affect changes and preserve badminton's place among the world's elite beyond the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro in 2016. Well, I mean, uh, it's follow the line that has been uh, written already. There will be changings, of course there will. And uh, one thing, of course, uh, we have to look at is development uh, and to put a lot of effort in that. We are having Rio 2016 in a country that uh, is not so familiar with badminton. So that requires a lot of action towards uh, Rio 2016. The three-time European champion aims to bring with him a leadership style with a strong player's perspective, having spent 14 years as a top-class men's singles shuttler. Well, it's a player's perspective. I mean, I'm a player, former player, and uh, still believe that uh, I can contribute uh, in the sense of developing the sport. We wish the Great Dane and BWF the best of luck. A day after the election, BWF held its annual gala dinner, of which the highlight was the Male and Female Player of the Year awards. 
double specialist Fu Haifeng and Wang Yihan bagged the coveted awards. Fu capped a fine season alongside Chai Yun with the men's doubles Olympic gold in London, while Wang picked up the Olympic silver medal and also took home the Malaysia Open and China Masters titles. Japan's Kento Momota was crowned the most promising player of the year following his successful campaign at the Junior World Championships. Coming up next, we take a look at the Malaysian camp plus their next-door neighbours' coaching methods, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Sam Hyong. You are watching Badminton World. Welcome back to Badminton World. The Malaysian badminton squad consists of the seniors, juniors and rookie players. And while the most familiar megastar or big brother amongst them is Chong Wei, there are also the other players in the squad that have crafted a name for themselves. For example, doubles pair Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Bun Hyong have gone on to win, among others, the 2006 Doha Asian Games, the 2007 All England Super Series, the 2008 Malaysia Super Series and the silver medal at the 2010 BWF World Championships. And the mixed doubles pair of Goh Liu Ying and Chan Peng Soon were crowned champions at the 2010 Asian Badminton Championships, the 2011 Bitburger Open, the 2012 Yonex Sunrise Malaysian Open GP Gold, and the 2012 Yonex Open Japan. Seeing their heroes playing, getting inspired and recognizing the fact that Malaysia was one of the top countries in the world when it comes to badminton, after carving a name at prestigious tournaments like the All England, the Olympics, the Thomas Cup and the World Championship, Young players the likes of Liu Darren, Chong Wei Feng and Arif Latif have made badminton a part of their lives. This will be my first Seoul Championship if I qualify, lah. so hopefully I can make it. Yeah. Apart from that, things to improve my ranking lah, into top 10. Looking at the situation now, the backup players are developing nicely. From Bukit Jalil Sports School and all that, we have a lot of talented players. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be more successful. I think he is a future player for Malaysia. So far, a lot of people are saying Darren is my replacement. The spotlight has always been on the men's team, but the women also make up a formidable team and have as much passion as the men. A few of them have made a mark in several international tournaments like Vivian Hu and Woon Ker Wei, became champions at the 2011 Indonesia Open GP Gold, Sonia Chia grabbed gold at the 2011 Commonwealth Games in doubles and won the Dutch Junior Tournament. The current Malaysian squad is definitely strong and passionate about the game. However, they need to step up in ensuring success. Seeing that the country has produced generations of champions and its dedication to the sport is endless, it is no surprise that the upcoming players in the squad will one day bring home a huge success. Regional supremacy at the Southeast Asian level is the province of two nations, Malaysia and Indonesia. But how does Singapore and Thailand close the gap with each country adopting a similar style? I would say the coaching method is quite similar among the Asian countries. It, it, um, the main difference will be uh, what we are focusing on at that point of time. If let's say um, um, there's a period of time when there's no competition, so we'll be focusing more on their physical fitness, we build on their strength, power, etc. Yeah, so when, um, and also, we also work on their techniques. And um, when it's approaching um, competition, so we are more specific, as in, um, we'll work on their match play, work on, work on their um, strategy. Coaching technique is designed to suit individual needs. Of course, we have um, some techniques that uh, we want the players to have, but um, because each player is different, their strengths are different. So for example, if my player, one of my players is very strong um, in attacking, of course, uh, we, will, we will just um, maintain his uh, attacking skills, techniques, while we work, uh, work on his defense, those uh, soft skills, like skill, control skills. How does the European method compare with the Asian style? For Europeans, generally they are physically stronger than Asians. You can see the build that they have. So um, I think uh, that's why they uh, focus more on strokes and techniques rather than physical fitness. 
Despite being a small nation, the badminton scene in Singapore gives a reason for optimism. I, I would say it's very uh, vibrant. Um, a lot of young kids are playing badminton. Yeah, and um, schools, in schools as well, social as well. And in fact, um, based on the last survey that our sports council has done, it's the fifth most popular sports in Singapore. If you ask the Thais, they would say variety is the spice of life. Subscribing to that belief, the rising stars of Thailand seem to apply a variety of tactics to their game, as their coach can testify. I think the training method every country, I think, almost the same. But in my, uh, my technique, uh, I try to put more uh, tactic for the prayer. Uh, you have to pray like a variety in, in your game and you pray. Because you, your opponent is every, every time you change. You have to change your game uh, to, to beat them. You cannot play the same every time. And, but you coach, you also have to uh, see what your prayer uh, style and, and what, the, uh, uh, what, what the good uh, strength what your strength and what your weak weakness, you have to to uh, cover your weakness and your use your your strength to to beat beat them and that 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 but but most the technique is almost same yes. Despite having produced multiple world junior champion Rachana Inthanon and a steady stream of players, the ties work within a tight budget. The coach is a multitasker. In Thailand, we don't don't have much budget for the psychologists. We just do everything by coach. Um, or we have some uh, uh, sports science for help in uh, physical fitness. As for the Europeans, former champion Kenneth Jonasson, who is back coaching in Denmark after a stint in England, says the mental aspect of the game must be given equal emphasis. We send the players to do weights to work on the body. The, the brain is just another um, a muscle that you need to work on and psychology is very, very important. It's, it's a part of understanding yourself, how you deal with pressure, uh, understanding the diff different situation you put you in throughout the match. And it could be even different things, the outside influence that makes you f feel the pressure and you don't know how to deal with that. A coach should also be resigned to the fact that he is not taking part in a popularity contest. You need to be tough as a coach. Uh, you, need to be, you need to make decisions which are uh, tough and uh, sometimes not very popular. But um, I guess uh, as a coach, um, for, for India, I think um, it's very important that um, the results come first and the players' performances are uh, important. And a long-term view um, of where the country's sport is progressing is also very important. So I've uh, been very clear and happy that I've taken uh, these decisions in the right spirit and we are uh, reaping the results of what I've done uh, in the last uh, six years, eight years as a coach. Badminton. No sport comes close. Coming up on Badminton World, results of the India Open, plus we speak to a badminton journeyman. Hi, my name is Hans Christian Wittinghus and you're watching Badminton World. The Yonex Sunrise India Open is the fourth leg of the OSIM BWF World Super Series that took place from the 23rd to the 28th of April. Malaysia's number one shuttler Lee Chong Wei added to his record haul when he defeated Japan's Kenichi Tago after a close tussle. Thailand's protege Rachana Intanon secured her first Super Series title with a win over world number four Julian Schenk of Germany 
while Tontowi Ahmad and Liliana Natser of Indonesia claim the mixed doubles title by beating the Korean duo of Sung Hyun Ko and Hana Kim. The women's doubles honor went to the Japanese pair of Miyuki Maeda and Satoko Suetsuna, who came from behind to beat Denmark's Christina Peterson and Camilla Ritayu. China's Liu Ziulong and Chu Zihan emerged the men's doubles champion with a win over Korea's Ko Sun Hyung and Lee Yong Dae. Now let's take a peek at the world rankings so far. Thanks to his win in the India Open, Chong Wei has put the Australian Open GP goal defeat behind him as the Malaysian ace remains firmly on top of the men's singles. Kenichi Tago, who was the runner-up in India, is the only change in the top five, with Chen Long, Du Peng Yu and Indonesia's Sonny Dwi Kunchoro remaining at number two, three and four respectively. Her win in India enabled Thailand's Rachana Inthanon to break into the top five in the women's singles, as Li Zhuri of China remains top woman. Malaysian pair Ku Ken Kiat and Tan Bung Hyung sought places with Ku Su Hyung and Li Yong Dae of Korea, who climbed to number two after finishing second in the India Open. In the women's doubles, Camilla Rita Yul and Christina Peterson replaced Japanese pair Shizuka Matsuo and Mami Naito at number three. In the mixed doubles, China's Zhu Chen and Ma Jin are still at the top, whilst there are no changes in the top five. For more information, you can visit BWF's official website. This month, we break from convention as we highlight an individual who has made a difference in badminton. He is a figure that's become very familiar to virtually every badminton enthusiast all over the world. Badminton journeyman Rafael Sachitat known to players and officials alike as a photojournalist. Based in France, Sachitat is the brains behind Solibad, Badminton Without Borders, a charity organization established in 2009 that aims to raise funds through the badminton community. I was touring the badminton circuit for about 10 years, so I, I got to know a lot of the top players and some of them uh, became some good friends. And when I talked to them about the project, they, they knew me, of course, they knew that I had a background within the charity uh, organizations, and uh, so they were quite happy to help. Sachitat has managed to pull a group of players together as Solibad ambassadors. Uh, very early on, Taufik Hidayat uh, joined us and he said he was really happy and honored to be part of this. Um, Peter Gedder, he was already on board from the very beginning and he became the special ambassador uh, for us, a global ambassador as well as Pyongyang. And then we had the other names like Lee Yong Dae, who's a superstar in Korea and in the rest of the world, who joined uh, Nathan Robertson from England, Saina Nuo from India, uh, and there are so many others from the badminton countries and non-badminton countries. In 2010, Solibad organized a flash mob involving 10 cities in France. It became such a hit that it started spreading globally. Last year, 100 cities around the world participated in a flash mob performed on the same day in front of iconic monuments. Another of Solibad's big projects is Solibad's One Night with the Stars, which was successfully held in Geneva in April. The project was held uh, together from, uh, with the uh, Solibad staff and the uh, Badminton Club of Geneva, uh, which was very involved from the, the very beginning of the, the project. And the idea was to bring together some of the world's biggest stars to have fun, to play uh, exhibition matches, and of course to collect money through this, uh, this event. And that was uh, one of the probably first badminton matches for charity. Badminton. No sport comes close. The pick of the events in June are Jarum Indonesian Open on June 10th to 16th at the famous Istora Senayan in Jakarta, to be followed by the Leaning Singapore Open on June 18th to June 23rd at the Singapore Indoor Stadium. That's all the time we have for you this month, with the exception of this month's selected Super Series moment. Don't forget, if you have a favorite Super Series moment of your own, send it over to badmintonworld at totalsportsasia.com. As we say goodbye, don't forget, we'll be back with more news, profiles, and interviews. But in the meantime, it's farewell for now from Badminton World. It's the world we know.